Do you love small things? What about small and cute things? What about small and cute things you can also control things with? If you have a very specific interest, then this is the review for you. d guys, it's me, Sergeant Major Mario, what is up? And this is the review of the Zero Two from A Bit Do. Oh, I see what they did there. So, as I was browsing through Amazon for other potential controllers to review, I came across this. Here's the thing, I've owned this control, not this very controller, but I did own the 8-bit Do Zero when it was originally white and blue and used for phones. Now I hear there's a switch port, and for some reason, I haven't opened this yet. I'm concerned why it's loose. All right. Uh, okay, I, okay, I swear someone's opened this box already. Seriously, I... What the fuck? There's only tape there, but all right. Uh... Yeah, I've owned uh, the phone version of this controller before, and it does work on Android apparently, so I could do that for a test, I guess, but yeah, let's open her up. Okay, we've got a bit of plastic here. Ah, okay. <laughs> so the loose stuff was literally the lead and the uh, restrict. I dropped the instruction booklet. Yep, so this will give me tips on how to connect, which is good, because I remember the last time I tried to connect an 8-bit new controller to my phone, it was really finicky. Yes, so we got the charger. We got the charger, all right, fucking hell. And we got the, ooh, it's rubbery, all right. But nonetheless, it goes on your wrist. Hmm. I remember the other one was, uh, not cotton, but, um, the sort of material you'd expect. This this more feels like you twist it and it's gonna keep that shape. Oh well. Well, you know, it's handy to have nonetheless, for those who care about that sort of thing. And here's the controller itself. You may notice it is tiny. It is a dinky little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> it is so small. Look at that, it's adorable. It's adorably small. The D-pad actually feels really nice. Buttons feel nice and clicky. Shoulder buttons feel very responsive. So this is, obviously this is gonna connect as a sideways Joy-Con. I have no idea what this thing is gonna, like. Oh, hello, ah, this is new. Ah. So on the back here, don't know if the camera will focus. Okay, it, it won't focus for some reason, but yeah, uh, there are different uh, inputs on how to connect stuff. So I press Y and the power button. I'm assuming it means start. And it will connect, oh, hello. I think that's peelable plastic. There you go. Yeah, fuck you. So yeah. The 8-bit do zero two. I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting this. Cause I didn't think they make a Switch version. I mean, I know 8-Bit do have made Switch controllers before, and I did plan to look at them, but I didn't expect this. Oh, there's some charge in it. Apparently, from what I've heard, the battery is meant to last. Uh, the original uh, version for the Androids was meant to last 24 hours on a full charger battery. Uh, does it say here? But yeah, so I'm, I'm obviously assuming this is a sideways Joy-Con. Much like with the Play-Cons, I have a few control games in mind. Uh, that I'm gonna test these with, uh, these this with. Uh, if you w if you want uh, various other color ones, uh, these come in gray, yellow, and blue. Uh, the same as the Switch Lite ones. In fact, I, I think this is a bit of a darker blue than the Switch Lite. Bit of a contrast in colors, but that is very reflective. Holy shit! What the fuck? <laughs> so this might be a suitable replacement. Only downside is, you're not going to have anything on the outside to grip, so you're going to be kind of stuck like this for a bit. But I am curious to see what this little controller holds. Let's get this started. <laughs> Alright, connected the controller and I... Huh. So instead of connecting as a sideways Joy-Con, it connects as a... Pro Controller. Huh? I went into the input test and sure enough, the D-pad has been registered as a left analog stick. How the hell does that work? What's even more confusing is that start and select of the controller are just that, plus and minus. So I thought that maybe pressing them together would be the home button, but no, it's the ZL button. How the hell does that work? Because of a lack of home button, I'm gonna have to keep a controller by my side just to actually access the home menu between games. So I started with fast RMX again, overall feel and test for motion. And my first problem is that because it's being registered as a pro controller, L and R are set to default controls. 
not to lean left and right like with the sideways Joy-Cons. So I'm gonna have to get used to no leaning. There was definitely no motion, it's obvious I know, but considering that it's being registered as a pro, anything's fucking possible at this point. The controller is too small for my hands, I was starting to feel some cramps, but that wasn't why I quit the race. Honestly, I was trying to think about games that only use the Pro Controller, or better experiences with it to see if the 8-bit Do Zero still held up. My first choice was, obviously, Smash Brothers. With the D-pad being registered as an analog stick, it was one I knew I had to test to see if inputs would be any different. One thing I realised? When playing a game like Smash Brothers with a tiny bloody controller, you're gonna get way more cramps than you normally would. True, it did read my inputs fine enough. However, when I tried to dash, Pip would dash for a few seconds and then stop when I tried to attack. It was borderline unplayable for me personally. I couldn't even do another game with Ricky. After the first match, I was done. Next on my list was Hatsune Miku Project Diva Megamix. The game came out last week and I'm enjoying my time. But I wasn't with the 8 bit 0 It was reading inputs fine enough, but if you wanted to button mash on the higher difficulties, well, you're certainly going to have issues with that. Megamix players. Challenge run. This controller, all the songs, extreme expert mode. Dare you, I fucking dare you. See if you can do it. Come on. <laughs> Try it. However, as I was playing through Alien, you may notice a t-shirt Miku's wearing. Yeah, I tried to make the flag of St. Pyrrhon. However, Mega Mix's customization is a load of shite, as you can only use the analog stick for directions. So with that in mind, I went to see if I could redo the shirt to be much better and straighter than I would with the analog stick. Yes, yes I can. I was able to make a better flag with this controller than this analog stick. Sega, allow D-pad to port on your, on your fucking customization thing, seriously. People can't do straight loads on the 360 analog stick, assholes. Last game, Dust and Legion Tail. I couldn't even make it to Mud Pop. I'm so used to the dashes, and the D-pad loved reading down inputs a lot when I was using the Aerial Dust Storm. And I know your comment explained that it's my fault in the first place for even attempting to play my favorite game with a limited controller. I'd argue you should have been registered as a Joy-Con, not a Pro Controller. So, do I... Do I recommend the 8-bit Do Zero 2? No, <laughs> this controller, it's, it wouldn't be as bad if it was connected as a sideways Joy-Con because even then it would be, um, you'd be more able to play more games suited for it because you'd have fucking home or capture, but no, it's a pro controller. So these are start and select. I had to have the pro controller, where the fuck did it go? I had to have the pro controller on the side so I can act, so I can navigate to the home menu. If I'm playing this on my own, then what the fuck? This should have been a sideways Joy-Con. This should not have been a pro controller. That is honestly my biggest gripe with this is the fact that it's a pro controller, not a sideways Joy-Con. And even then, if it was a sideways Joy-Con, you know, it would have been a bit more tolerable. But you know, I got the snake bites, and these are much better. And you know, I'm not just saying that because they sent me these. I honestly love these controllers. They're, they are fantastic controllers, and I recommend you get these over this. If you want something small and cute, don't get this. No. <sighs> it's too small for the hands. I've got big hands, so if you have a kid, you know, you got a son who's like, I don't know, small, maybe, maybe Peter Dinklage can get a kick out of this. I don't know. But I do not recommend this controller for the life of me. It has some good points. I was able to finally perfect the Cornish flag t-shirt for Miku to wear. That's about it. It's too small, the buttons are fine, and it's good on Android. I didn't have a problem I didn't have a problem with Android phones. I, I suppose the upside is you can keep it in your pocket right next to your phone, and it would probably take up as about as much space as a Nintendo Switch cartridge. But that's about it. I mean 17 pounds. I don't know. I have to give this controller 3 out of 10. I, I, I honestly do. And some of you may say, well, it's not targeted towards you, so why are you complaining? Here's the thing, I'm looking at all second-hand controllers. Even if they're not targeted to me, I'm looking at cheap third-party second-hand controller, gimmicky controllers, I add. See if they're worth your money instead of spending 60 pounds, <coughs> excuse me, on a brand new Switch controller. That's why I'm doing this series in the first place. So this is my review, not everyone else's. I'm giving this shit a 3 out of 10. I'm pretty sure 8-bit do make great controllers. I'm not saying I'm judging 8-bit do solely on this. I've seen their other controllers, they look great, and I plan on getting them to review. 
This is not a good stepping stone for me though, isn't it? <laughs> Whew! <laughs> Honestly, I, I was expecting sideways Joy-Con. That's honest, I was just expecting sideways Joy-Con for this thing. I wasn't expecting Pro Controller. That's the biggest gripe. Because the thing is, when you have a Pro Controller, it, a Pro Controller requires more buttons. ZL, ZR, clicking the left stick, clicking the right stick, the right analog stick. You know, you could use this on Splatoon. You could, because it's a Pro Controller, but you can't turn the camera. You can't even shoot, because this is L and R. You can only get into your ink by pressing those two down. Even then, if you hold star for so long, the controller's gonna turn itself off. So, I feel like, a bit do. I very much doubt you're watching this. Please fix your fucking controller. If you set it as a sideways Joy-Con, maybe I can give it more of a fair review. But even then, you're kind of limited anyway, because you can't click the D-pad down as a button. I tried. Whew. <laughs> Oh, that is a weird controller. That is a very weird controller. I know that it's based off their phone one, and that's fine, but you, you, you're selling this as like a controller for the Switch Lite. That's not a good thing. Honestly, you're kind of shooting yourselves in the foot. You could have done some you could have done some more with this. Maybe add another button for capture or for home. Especially if it's connected as a pro controller. It, it you know, I feel like a lot you're gonna get a lot of pissed off parents when they find out that little Timmy can't do as much as they think because oh look at that, it's a pro controller. Where are the extra D-pad and analog sticks? But hey, -oh, uh you get what you pay for, I guess. I guess my money was expecting something else. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, do you have the 8-bit do zero two? Let, let, let me know what you think down below and tell me how wrong I am because I played the wrong games when testing it because I'm pretty sure some people are already thinking that. But yeah, that's all i got to say really. And then subscribe. See you later. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sergeant Major Myers saying ciao.